Hey everyone, welcome back. So, a couple of weeks ago, I dropped my review on the Nintendo Switch Lite. And overall, it was pretty positive. Basically, it's a great console for someone who doesn't mind exchanging a little more comfort and a little bit more portability for the possibility to dock it to a television. And, however, the console wasn't perfect. And in that video, I did hint at a couple of accessories that could really enhance your gameplay experience. So what you have in front of you on the table are all those accessories that over the last month and a half, I found really enhanced my gameplay experience with the Nintendo Switch Lite. By the way, there are some that didn't, but those won't be focused on the video today. It's already probably gonna be long enough as is just looking at those positive ones, where we're probably gonna come back to the accessories I didn't like in a separate video. And also, just to mention, I'm not sponsored in any way, and these accessories were not given to me. I, I purchased them all myself, so you'll be really getting my honest-to-God opinion on all of these accessories. At the same time, uh, if you're looking at those really just basic accessories that you need when you buy your console, we're going to be skipping those today. Why? Because I already have a video, and you can follow the link above if you want to check those out. So if you're looking at cases, memory cards, and that kind of stuff, it's going to be in my basics accessories video. Today we're really going to focus on those accessories that you don't absolutely need as a Nintendo Switch Lite owner, but at the same time could really enhance your experience based on the way you play and how you're going to be using your console. Because by the way, don't be scared, you don't have to buy everything on this table, because most of these accessories are actually not necessarily compatible one with another. And you'll have to be making a choice, like I said, based on the way you play, of which ones will be good for you. And that's the point of today. I'm gonna to go over those accessories, what are the good points, what are the down points, and help you make choices so that you can be set up with your best gameplay setup for your Nintendo Switch Lite. So, without further ado, let's get to a few of those accessories. So the first accessory we're gonna look like is probably the most basic one. It's not necessarily gonna enhance your gameplay experience, but it will ease your peace of mind to leave your console on a table or a desk, which is the screen protector. And nowadays, honestly, screen protectors are so good that you can't even tell when they're there if they're properly installed. So it's really one of those accessories that I would strongly recommend. Generally, depending on whether you get a pack of two or three, uh, it, they cost between five or 10 bucks and they can save you $200 because honestly, a broken screen on a Switch Lite is fixable, but unless you can do it yourself, money-wise, you're probably better off just buying a new console uh, most of the time. Now, I don't necessarily know that one company is definitely better than another, but the company I opted to go for is JE Tech, which is a company I'd actually used their products before on other devices, and I knew that generally they're quality products and they generally come with a very full installation kit. By installation kit, I mean you get a cloth basically to clean your screen, you get a wet wipe, you even get a sticker that helps you remove any dust particles that could be stubborn and stay stuck on your screen. And there's actually a really step-by-step -step installation process to make sure that overall, once you've had your uh, screen protector installed, it really is seamless and you can't even tell it's there. So honestly, if you're looking at buying a Switch Lite, this is one of those accessories. They generally cost between five and 10 bucks, depending on if it's a pack of two or three. And honestly, I wouldn't forgo this one just because honestly, for five or 10 bucks, you can possibly save yourself 200 on the flip side. So next on our list, we have thumb grips. And honestly, for the Nintendo Switch Lite, I think they're much more important than the Nintendo Switch itself. Number one, you're gonna be using primarily these thumbsticks. You won't be using a pro controller most of the time if you're in portable mode. Secondly, aesthetically, I understand why, but Nintendo opted for white joysticks this time. What that means is one Dorito gaming session or one just you know dirty finger gaming session and you're gonna wind up with orange, black, or brown thumbsticks. And that can be aesthetically not pleasing. And while the other buttons are pretty easy to clean because they have a plasticky finish, the thumbsticks have a rubbery finish for gameplay reasons, but overall that means that they also clean off not that well. So these thumbsticks are not only a gameplay improvement, but they're also an aesthetic improvement for you to keep your console looking good for a longer period of time. Now, overall, it's really hard for me to suggest which one of the thumb grips were best overall. I tried three different types. I tried the Skull Candy versions, I tried the Pokeball versions, and I tried the Hori uh, Mario versions. And uh, the Hori are identical. They come in Zelda, they come in Mario. 
My personal preference was the Hori versions because they are concave rather than the other two being convex, okay? But that will be your personal gameplay style. Luckily, they're one of the cheaper accessories, so if you do have to try a couple before falling in love with one type, it's maybe not the hugest loss, but it's hard for me to tell you which ones are the best, because like I said, it'll depend on your per personal preference and personal feel. However, like I said, all three are very good. I'll leave links down below. You can pick up one of each type if you want and figure out which one is the best for you overall. Now we're coming to one of our first choices. Basically, we're gonna be look at the different grip options. And the two I chose to test out and that I really liked overall was the rubberized sort of case protector grip versus the traditional gameplay grip like we've seen for the traditional Nintendo Switch. So let's start with the advantages of the grip. Gameplay wise, I would say this is the most comfortable one overall and it's the one that's going to help you the most in long gameplay sessions. So if you play long gameplay se sessions, especially in handheld mode, this is the best grip for you. However, at the same time, it offers less protection than the rubberized case. And the portability factor of your console is reduced a notch because this won't fit in most of the Switch Lite cases. However, I did find a workaround. If you buy a regular Nintendo Switch case, one of the larger, thicker models, it actually will fit in with the grip on the Nintendo Switch Lite, so you won't have to remove it and you'll be able to fit it in the case. However, I would recommend trying it first because some can still be pretty snug. The other advantage that this one offers is basically, as you saw, this doubles as a stand. So if you wanna play in tabletop mode, you can drop the leg down and use it as a stand to play your Switch Lite. And lastly, it even offers four cartridge slots on the back where you can just pop games in. So especially if you're walking around the house or playing around the house and you don't wanna to have to drag your game case with you or your game collection with you, it's actually a pretty fun accessory option to pop in a couple of games that you know you'll be playing throughout the day and have everything in one handheld fat form factor. Now, on the other hand, we have the rubberized case protector. And overall, it fits really well on the console and it does give you a slightly better grip because as you can see, it adds thickness basically on each side of the console to help to better help you grip while you're playing. However, overall, if you have large hands, I would say that this isn't gonna be the best accessory for you. You'll feel much more comfortable with the full grip. However, getting back to this one, if you have smaller hands, so I could be thinking if for women or for younger kids, they probably will be feeling very comfortable with this and it'll give them what they need to be able to grip onto the console for long play sessions. However, for myself with larger hands, it wasn't the best option for me gameplay wise. However, at the same time, when you combine this with the screen protector, you could say that your console is pretty much as well protected as it can be when it's outside of a case. So there is the protection factor that is very positive with this case. And overall, it does also fit in the Nintendo Switch Lite cases still. So portability factor is less impacted by this one than by the full grip. So if you already have a Nintendo Switch Lite case and you don't want to necessarily, like I said, switch to that full Nintendo case, uh, Nintendo Switch case basically, you may be better off going with the rubberized grip just because it's going to not make you sacrifice that portability factor. But overall, the choice is gonna be yours both options are very, very good, and they're gonna be linked in the description down below. The rubberized protector is around 10 bucks. The grip is more generally around 15. Next, let's talk about stands. So here we have two options in front of us. Number one, if you've gone for the grip in the previous part of this video, uh, you can forgo this stand because ultimately it has the same functionality as this one. However, if you did decide to go with the rubberized protector for your Switch Lite, you can go with this stand and have a perfect tabletop mode uh, available for your Switch that even gives you access to charging the Switch at the same time as you're playing because the charge port is available while it's in this stand. However, at the same time, uh, it unfortunately doesn't add any other functionality to your Switch than giving you a comfortable tabletop mode. On the other side of this table, we have the Hori Multiport Switch. Basically the Hori Multiport, what it does, and I've talked about this one in previous videos, 
and I think you guys already guessed, it's one of my favorite accessories for the Switch Lite, is that basically it gives you the ability to connect your Switch Lite and gives you access to four USB ports, plus the capacity to charge your Switch as you're playing. And honestly, later in the list, we're gonna be looking at a couple of USB options for your Switch Lite. And if you wanna have access to using those USB options, uh, you're going to actually need the Hori multi-port or you're going to be, need a USB-C to USB adapter. So basically, your choice of stands will be dependent on the grip you chose and also on what future accessories you might want for your Switch Lite. Personally, the reason I love the Switch Multi-Port is that it makes your Switch Lite compatible with all the USB accessories that already came out for the original Switch. And overall, I find it's the one that will open up the most possibilities for future upgrades to your Switch Lite setup. One important thing to note though, if you did go for the rubberized grip, okay, it does not fit one in directly into the multi-port. It looks like it's fitting, but unfortunately the USB connection is not established. So you will have to take it out of the rubberized grip to be able to put it in the Hori multi-port dock. It's also not compatible while the grip is on the switch light. So if you want to use it with the grip, you're going to have to remove the grip and install it in the switch multi-port. But overall, it's not a big issue. It's just something I nonetheless wanted to let you guys know. So next on the list of great accessories for your Nintendo Switch Lite is a really solid pair of gaming earbuds. Now, there's a lot of options out there because this is a standard 3.5 millimeter plug that's on the Nintendo Switch Lite. However, I chose to go with the Hori Gaming Earbuds Pro because they really offer you options that are directly in line with what you need with a Nintendo Switch Lite. So you can use them in three different ways. The standard way is just like normal earbuds. Basically, you pop them directly into your Nintendo Switch Lite, you pop them in your ears and you're ready to go. You even have a built-in inline mic for basic voice chat options. Secondly, if you wanna add the external microphone to the left earbud, you'll have a much better sound for really intense in-game voice chat options, which will give you, which will help eliminate ambient sound and give you really an extra level of quality to your voice chat options. And lastly, you even have an attach, an extra attachment that you can add as a mixer option. This is basically, if you need to use the Nintendo Switch online voice chat app, you have basically one end that will plug into your Nintendo Switch Lite, the other end into your smartphone, and you'll be able to control the mixing of the volumes between your gameplay and your chat options giving you really the best overall experience for the games that, that require you to use that online app. Because unfortunately, often when you're using the app, the sound of the gameplay will be muffled by the chat sounds. And with this mixer, you can actually control the volumes of each, and it really gives you the best overall gaming experience on the Nintendo Switch Lite that I've ever had using the online voice chat app. Now the gaming earbuds pro are a little bit on the more expensive side at about 30 bucks and PDP does make a more basic option at around $15 that you should see on screen right now. Uh, basically they come with basic earbuds, an inline mic, uh, no detachable mic on these and no mixer options. But if you're looking for just basic voice chat options and basic gaming sound, these can be very good as well. I don't physic I don't have them right now, but one of my friends uses that on a regular basis and I've tried them out. They are great. They work perfectly fine. However, if you're looking for that little bit extra pep, I really recommend going for the Gaming Earbuds Pro, especially if you're gonna be gaming a lot and for a long time on your Switch, you're gonna be thankful that you spent the extra 10 to 15 bucks. So next we come to Ethernet adapters. If you're gonna be playing online, trust me, you're gonna want one of these, especially if you're gonna be playing competitive such as Dragon Ball Z Fighters, because the latency Consistency in your connection is gonna be so much better with an ethernet adapter. You're gonna be thanking yourself you made the investment for when you're playing at home or you have access to an ethernet connection. Now, there's two types of models we could go for. You can go for one that attaches directly into the Nintendo Switch Lite through USB-C. They are slightly more expensive, but you won't need any other accessories to get them to work. Or, on the other hand, 
You could go with a USB type A if you chose to go with, for example, the Hori multi-port adapter that we looked at earlier in this video, or any type of USB-C to USB-A type adapters that you could buy with for your Nintendo Switch Lite. Honestly, it's a little bit cheaper, and maybe the other advantage I can see to this one is that if you have any other devices in your household that don't have an Ethernet port built in, but are USB type A compatible, they'll mo work with most of your other devices that you could have around the household. Now last, but definitely not least on our list of, you know, great Switch Lite accessories are a controller. And here, if you look in front of me, you have two different models. The difference is pretty obvious. One is wired, one is wireless. This is a PDP face-off controller. This is a Power A enhanced controller. And both of them are excellent controllers and the choice of which one will be depending pretty much on what accessories you chose to go with previously. If you chose to go down the line with the Hori multi-port, you'll have option to the wired USB controller. If you decided to go with more of a standard stand or the uh, standard shell for your, US, your Nintendo Switch Lite, you'll be going more towards an enhanced controller, a wireless option, because you won't have the option to have a standard USB plug. And both are great options. And the reason why you really want a controller with a Nintendo Switch Lite is that even though nine out of 10 games, you'll be fine with the D-pad on the Nintendo Switch Lite itself, you'll come across those games where you really need a controller to be competitive, especially if you play online once again. Once again, I'm coming back to Dragon Ball Z Fighters, but the D-pad on the Nintendo Switch Lite, although it's much better for platformers than the four buttons that we had on the standard Switch, it's still not great for 2D fighters, especially if you have to put input rotating motions like uh, the Hadouken motion, the Shoryu motion, uh, those are things that you will want a standard controller with a real D-pad on them to be able to be competitive in those games. Now, stay tuned because next we're going to look at what the overall setup can look like depending on which accessories you chose for. So I'm going to give you a couple of different choices and I'm going to tell you also which is my favorite choice overall for a really full pack Nintendo Switch Lite accessory lineup. Here we have setup number one, really maximizing portability. You've got the rubberized protector for the Switch. You've got the most compact stand out of the stands I looked at. You have the USB-C adapter that plugs directly into your Switch, not needing any other equipment, your wireless controller, and your earbuds. With this, you're set up, you're good to go, and it's gonna be taking the least space possible in your bag. Overall, if you want to carry all this around, it's still going to take a lot of space, a little bit of space, but eliminate that controller and you've got a pretty minimalistic setup going here. You can probably fit this in a medium sized Nintendo Switch case, no problem, and you're good to go. You're all set up. Now, this is a great option, but personally, it's not my favorite. My favorite setup is going to be setup number two, which we're getting to at right now. And here we have it, setup number two. Now setup number one, maximize portability. Setup number two I find maximizes gameplay, giving you the best overall options for uninterrupted gameplay, but by sacrificing some of the portability. You've got your Hori multi-port with your Nintendo Switch Lite when you're at home. You can charge and play at any time. You've got your Ethernet adapter for when you need to hit those online gameplays. And you've got your wired controller from when you want to play those 2D fighters. I kept the earbuds in there because they're always good to have around. And finally, when you're really in handheld mode and you want to pop around, you take your switch out, you pop it in your grip and you're ready to go in handheld mode with the maximized most comfortable gameplay for long gameplay sessions. So overall, both options are very feasible and very awesome in my opinion. And overall, any of these accessories on their own are great options for your Nintendo Switch Lite. So honestly, I can recommend each and every one of these accessories. So that's gonna be it for today. Now, if anyone wants to pick up any of the accessories that you've seen in this video, as I said earlier, the links are gonna be down in the description below. Those are affiliate links, so you will be helping out the channel at the same time. If any of you liked the video, please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. 
If you didn't like the video, well, how about you let me know why in the comments and I'll try to make it better for next time. But in the meantime, I hope I'll catch you guys in my next video. And I gotta get back to working on my review for Luigi's Mansion 3 because that's one heck of a game.